Sea shanties. The song of the deep water sailor. Sung to make the welkin ring. The heavens resound. Or to relieve fear or exhaustion. To lift the days of boredom with amusement. Or fond recall of things left far behind. The great square rigged ships were run on Armstrong's Peyton, muscle power. Sea shanties lightened a sailor's burden by setting tempo, telling him when to heave or haul, when to breathe, or establishing a rhythm that could be maintained steadily over hours of dreary labor at capstan, windlass, or pumps. They sang too as they loaded the ship and prepared to put to sea. Then they'd sing of the girls they left behind, of good times and bad they'd had on shore. Or perhaps, as they raised the anchor and thought of the hardships ahead, they might sing the exploits of the legendary sea heroes, resolving their courage by singing the tales of the great old men like Captain Stormalong. Aye, aye, Mr. Stormalong. Well, dig his grave with a silver spade. Yankee Johnny Stormalong. The golden age of wooden ships and iron men was a relatively short period in history, and the heyday of shanty singing was even shorter. From the late 1800s to the early 20th century, the great packets, clippers, and whalers moved with the trade winds and the strength of the men who manned them. Work and songs have gone together since, since work began. No one knows when work songs first took to sea or in fact, even where the word shanty comes from. The first deep water sailors may have learned to sing at work while in the Orient. All together, aye, cheerly man. For good weather, aye, cheerly man. Light as a feather, aye, cheerly man. Some ships were so bad that no song would be heard in an entire voyage. But that was not usual. On most ships, the shantyman was chosen at the very start of the voyage. 
the first mate or bosun would come on deck and shout out, All right, which one of you is a nightingale? And in a matter of minutes, the crew would have picked one of their members to be the shantyman for the rest of the voyage.